Hi, my name is Henley Gray, and this is gonna be my first like actual video on this channel. I was watching Heartstopper, um, like less than a week ago. I started Heartstopper, and I so like am was in love with that show so much that even though I've had this YouTube channel for a bit and I've like haven't really known what I wanted to do with it. For, because of that show and some other things going on in my life right now, I was like, I would really love to make like an actual YouTube video and just talk about how great the show is and like my thoughts on the show and like how it, what it means to me and everything. So I think what I like, you know, what I'm doing here is like, I'm going to make like a tier list, I guess, or just like, maybe I'll just like talk about it because I don't got the tier list up, but I kind of just wanted to talk about Heartstopper episode by episode. And you know, this video is, is season one, and then I'll make another one for season two. Um, of like, what I think about the show, and how it, like, I relate to so many aspects of the show as like, a gay dude, and just like, someone that's like, can relate to so many things in that show. And just, I wanted to share some things that like, I think other people, if anyone were watching, um, might want to hear from someone. Um, someone else, like, my kind of perspective from what I think about certain things on that show and why I think it's, like, such a good show and, like, all good things, to be honest, you know? Um, so I just wanted to first give, like, a super abridged, small, um, background on my sexuality and a lot of what that in involved before I, like, get into me talking about the show. Um, so... For a while, like until literal like super beginning of high school, I liked girls or like I thought I did, you know, um, and I did. Like it's not that ju I just like oh like I was confused or whatever. Like I had monster crushes on like four girls throughout several years of like elementary and middle school, you know. Um, I was like head over heels in love, and I, I still remember their names and their faces, and I, I remember all of them very well. Um, except for like kind of the first one because I don't even like that was in like third grade or something um, My first crush it was on a girl named Lexi in like third grade I think <laughs> and like dude like dude I, like, That's even like I can't even fathom being in third grade right now if I'm being honest But I was like in love with this girl kind of, like not in love, but you know what I mean? Like uh, I was crushing on this girl Lexi in third grade the next girl I liked her name was Kylie I think it started in like fifth grade, maybe sixth. I knew her in like fifth and sixth grade. I don't know when I started crushing, but I would imagine it was like fifth grade, maybe sixth. Um, and I liked her like a lot, dude. Like we did this dance thing for like, I don't even know what it was for, but I think it, it involved um, evacuate the dance floor and something else. And I was doing it cause I wanted you whatever. But um, next girl in seventh grade was her name was Ashley. I think I might have known her before 7th grade. Maybe? <laughs> I don't really remember, but 7th uh, grade was when I was really crushing on her. Um, like, a lot. And then, <laughs> next, lastly, <laughs> for the girls, her name was Zia. And uh, this was in 8th grade. I was crushing on her. <laughs> like, a lot, dude. All these girls, like, again, like, monster crushes, dude. Like, not just like, oh, I think I might like them. Like, it was like, no, this was like some serious fuck shit, dude. Like romantically in my brain as like a, a little ass kid, you know? Um, so then day one of uh, high school, uh, I walk into theater and I see this dude, his name is Tristan. And like, I like insta crush on him. Like literally like insta, like not like love at first sight, but just like I saw this dude and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> and I was like, I guess I'm bi. Cause at, like, at this point I was like, thought I had like girls and didn't even like consider that I was gay. Even though maybe I should have known cause I was in seventh grade art class singing Nicki Minaj with my friend Nat. You know, like maybe I should have thought about it more, but I just didn't, you know, I, I didn't really, wasn't even aware at all. And then like immediately I, I crushed on this dude and I was like, yeah, I'm bi. And then like, you know, very soon after I was like, um, no, I don't, I'm not bi. I don't like girls like sexually at all which I don't really know I, how I didn't come to that conclusion earlier, to be honest. But it was also confusing for like a couple days because I was like, but I liked girls like that, you know? It, it really didn't make much sense to me. And I'll talk about the full circle-ness of my thoughts on all this, like not in this video, but later. Um, 
And then, like, you know, I realized, I was like, yeah, I really like guys, and I'm, like, sexually attracted to them, and romantically, and everything, and I'm just not. And even then, like, since then, I've never had, like, a real romantic crush or anything like that on a girl, ever. You know, it's, it's I just, I don't know how that, I, I don't know, I, mean, I might not ever know how, how that works, you know, so who knows. Um, but then I had my first boyfriend at 17, um, it was long distance, we met up a couple times, uh, you know, as as good as a long distance like 17 year old relationship where we're both idiots and don't really know what's going on like that um as good as that can be i mean it was it was all right <laughs> like you know, I, I was really i was into him you know and everything uh but you know that, that lasted like about a year um and then another relationship i had lasted for like two weeks and then a, another relationship was like kind of on and off for like three years and I learned like a lot in that relationship and Heartstopper like taught me a lot about that relationship like now that like it, I've been out of it for a while and that like I've been reflecting on it anyway and then I watched Heartstopper and I was like oh wow like certain things I was like I definitely made that mistake or, or it was like I we were in these scenarios and you know whether it was me or him or whatever like there was a lot that I could relate to that to my own relationships like all of them really where i was like yeah this kind of was like how it was um and i'll go into that um later but again like kind of like a long ass intro well not really like seven minutes it's kind of long for a youtube video probably but i just be talking dude um so first um real quick before i start with episode one i just want to talk about how beautiful this show is and how much i recommend it excuse me so I went into this show, I was like, I was about to watch my second run through of Death Note, and I was like, I just want to watch some fucking gay show instead, like, I don't want to watch more Death Note right now. And then I I was looking through Netflix, and I, I know a part, Heartstopper, obviously, I've heard of it and shit, but um, I was kind of like, because right now I'm 24, I'll be, I'll be 25 very soon. So I was like, kind of looking through Netflix, I was like, I kind of want to like some queer show that is like people in their early 20s like preferably um but there wasn't really anything catching my eye so i was like okay we'll watch heartstopper you know anyway and again even though most of the stuff that i loved about this show was not applicable to me in high school a lot of it was but a lot of the scenarios they were in were just not happening in my life in high school but a lot of them were happening to me in my late teens and early 20s and I was like, oh, like, the show does a very good job at, like, expressing queer experiences that, like, e like with high schoolers that, like, don't even necessarily only happen at, like, high school age. That, like, wow, these are things that happen to me, like, five, five, six, seven years later, or wow, these are things that can happen at, like, really any point in your life. Um, and I was very shocked at how beautiful and wholesome it was into where it's, like, even when there's conflict, it's, like, there's not extended conflict and even when there is conflict it's kind of resolved quickly and it makes the love in the relationship stronger so it's not depressing at all e either either like like a lot of queer media can be because it, it can be depressing you know um i was just very and it was like it made me feel good i was crying like every episode dude like almost every 16 episodes i was crying literally like everyone you know i was like oh my god dude like i get it like, I, and I, I wonder, like, I know a lot of people are going to get a lot of things about this show, but I, especially, like, people that haven't experienced certain things in the show, or, like, maybe aren't as queer or not, I don't identify as, like, gay or anything like that, they might not get it, or they might just look at some things and be like, this is not a gay thing, but, like, I'm thinking about some of these scenarios, and I'm like, no, this is way more of a gay experience, even though it could happen to straight people, because of the way sexuality is in our culture, and that, like, these situations happen more with gay people. They really do, like, at the end of the day. Um, especially because, like, I've come out of so many friend groups, like, two or three years later, like, at the beginning, I was the only one that was openly gay because I've been out since I'm, I'm, four, or I'm, like, 14, dude. And, like, I'll, well, well, like, two, three years later, the same friend group, and, like, everyone will be some form of gay, you know? Like, we'll have, or, like, just queer, or anywhere on a spectrum, where it's, like, you know, now it's, like, oh, I'm gay, and then my friend is bi, and then my other friend is trans, and then, like, three, you know, like, lots of people are just, like, queer in the same friend group just like several years later um and like the show does a good job of uh, reflecting how a lot of that um happens you know and i also just want to say finally before you know i think i'm gonna cut this and like not, i might rewatch episode one before i talk about it or i might like read up on it or like skim through it i don't know but do not watch this video if you 
like want to watch it. Like if you're sitting here watching me talk about Heartstopper, I guarantee you would much rather watch this show blind and watch it before you watch me. So like if you're watching this and you have any form of interest in watching Heartstopper, fucking leave and go watch it and come back if you want. Like, don't just sit here and listen to me talk about it. I'm just some dude, like, talking about the, this godlike show. But that sh this show is, like, actually fucking phenomenal. And I don't have much faith in a lot of modern, depict like, modern media to depict, like, teens or young adults well um, nowadays. To where it's, like, I'll go into a lot of shows being, like, dude, like, this is not how it is, you know? And even though there was like some of a tiny, tiny bit of that, there was just an overwhelming amount of things in that show were still relatable and still real that I was like, I don't care. I didn't care when those moments happened where I was like, okay, that's a bit much. Cause even then those things I was like, no, they still happen. They probably just didn't happen to me, you know? Um, just go watch it. It's fucking amazing, dude. And like, again, you don't even have to be gay or anything to like this show. Like your heart will fucking melt watching this show. It don't teach you how to love someone or how to be loved, you know? Um, so I think I'm gonna cut there. I don't think I'm gonna edit this down, but I might. And, uh, I'm gonna, you know, do a little re-watch re or whatever of episode one, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna talk about a lot of the things in episode one. So, I'll be back. <laughs>